I've never been touched by him. Look at how cute! Somebody block the time. We're almost there. Ready? Go. Go. Okay, right there. Good job. So last night we were under a freeze warning, and we were predicted to get down to 32 degrees. And so I brought inside my peppers from the caterpillar tunnel, but there is one plant I forgot about, and that is my flowers. I have some cosmos out here that I checked on all the plants this morning, and they were totally frozen. I checked my thermometer that's on my garden, and we got down to 24 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes a pretty big difference. So the tunnel offers a little bit of buffer, but not a ton. Like I told you, I'd share some of my fails along with those successes. So it'll make you guys feel better because I mess up all the time too. So here they are. Definitely frozen. Not a big deal though to me because it's flowers. I would be more devastated if it was like, you know, my tomatoes or peppers. And then those are straw flowers. They fared really well. I don't think, I think I underestimated how frost sensitive these plants are though. I did at least have the foresight to cover my asparagus in anticipation of a possible frost. So I did a double layer of row cover, mostly because I'm using a row cover that I used last year. And as I use them, they get ripped up <laughs> holes in little places. So if I double layer it, then usually nothing is exposed. So I'm gonna uncover this and hopefully my asparagus is still in good shape under here. And yeah, this, this looks like it might be our last frost, but it has been a really cold spring, so I have no idea. We could probably get some more. Not looking good so far. This one still froze. This one's in good shape. So maybe the bigger ones lasted. Smaller ones, that's definitely a goner. So the majority are, are in good shape actually. I was looking at that first one. This is looking good. So here's one of my purple asparagus and this is in perfect shape too actually. No frost damage at all. So pretty though. Over the past couple days we've been harvesting greens and I'm going to harvest some more. We have lots so we're just having great big bowls of salad for dinner almost every day. <laughs> We planted our peas three weeks ago. It took them about a week and a half to germinate. And a couple of days after that, I noticed the germination was really kind of spotty. And I just attributed that to planting at different depths because I was using that cedar. And after waiting another week, I dug down to see what was going on with the peas and there were no peas there. And then I remembered that a couple of days after we had planted the peas, some chickens flew from the top of their chicken tractor over our garden fence and into the garden. And I saw them pecking at 
the peas, but I did not realize the extent of peas that they ate until right now. <laughs> and it is huge gaps like a big loss of peas they did a very good job cleaning it out they were kind of shallowly planted so they were able to find them very easily and now i am dealing with the aftermath of that my plan right now is to replant the peas the risk with that is that it gets really hot here really early so what you get is the peas will just stop growing they won't produce very well and i'm hoping the cool season continues so that we can actually get a decent harvest if that doesn't happen then my backup plan is to plant more of another vegetable that can make up for that and so in this case i'll probably plant more green beans if i can't get the pea harvest that i need I soaked my peas today, which I do not normally do, but since I'm hand planting, I can do that and I'm hoping they will germinate much faster because they're already soaked. I just did it for like four hours is all and they rehydrated quite a bit. And then I added some inoculant on them, which helps them to fix nitrogen in the soil. This time of year is really critical for keeping weeds under control. We do weeding almost every single day. Because our gardens are really pretty new, we still have a lot of weeds. One of the reasons why I really like no-till gardening is because as the years go on, you get less and less weeds because you're not tilling up the soil. But since the garden is new at this point, just um, some parts of the garden are two years old, some parts are just one year old, and some parts are brand new. We're still working on uh, getting out a lot of the perennial weeds and some a lot of the annual weeds. Some of the things that we have done this year to try and prevent some of that is we're putting down a lot of wood chip mulch in our walking paths. And the other thing that we're doing this year to try and prevent a lot of weeds is making sure even in our garden beds that the soil is covered with a pretty thick layer of compost so that we don't have as many weeds. The area that I am working on weeding today is our potatoes. When we planted those initially, I decided not to cover those with compost because I wanted the potatoes to be able to pop up through the soil and sprout. And then I wanted to be able to um, hill them a little bit with the clay soil that we have just so they stay cooler in the soil. on a rock or something. In our expanded garden area, I am forming the garden beds. And to do that, I'm using our BCS tractor with the rotary plow attachment. That attachment spins on an axis and you take it down basically where you want your walking path to be and it will throw up all the dirt on top of where you want your garden to be. So you get these really nice mounded rows and 
better drainage than having it all flat. So I'm taking it from this beginning all the way over to where the kids' gardens are gonna be. That's about half of what we want to do. It's like a 50 by 100 foot area, but I'm not ready to do the second half yet. So we're just doing half right now. After our initial forming of the garden beds, we don't do any tilling after this. So this is the chance that we have to mix things in. I am adding a few things right now. One of those things is azomite. What that adds is some minerals to our soil. I'm also gonna add some wood ash. So we did a soil test. So I know that my soil is low in pH and I also know that it is low in potassium and wood ash helps with both of those things and adds some trace minerals as well. You have to be careful with wood ash about how much you add. You really don't wanna to add too much. So I always just add a small amount of that. And then on top of that, I still have to add some garden lime because we're still gonna be a little bit low even after adding that wood ash. And then finally, I will add some compost as well. And I'm trying to get this all done before it rains tomorrow because the soil is perfect for forming garden beds right now. It's just the right amount of dampness that the BCS can work through the soil really, really well. It has been unseasonably cold this spring and things are growing super slow with one exception and that is my spinach, which is doing amazing. All of our spinach is ready to be harvested and I am going to preserve a bunch of it. And how I'm gonna preserve it this time is I'm gonna make and dry some spinach pasta. Spinach pasta is a really good one to do in the spring because the pasta that we make uses eggs. So it uses a lot of our abundance of eggs in the spring and uh, the spinach, which we have an abundance of right now as well. So it works out really well. I dried some of this last week and we just did it the old fashioned way, drying it over like a rod. But the problem with that drying method is you get these little curved hooks on your pasta and it makes it really difficult to store. So today I'm trying a different method and I'm gonna do it in our dehydrator and just try and lay them out flat and dry them that way. I love the idea of using the dehydrator just because I want to be able to store these a lot longer than I normally would. Usually I try and eat pasta I make within like a month and I'm thinking I want to be able to have these last through the rest of the year. What's 105 times 4? Come on somebody, quick math. 420. 420. Very good. So 420 minus 180. Uh, 240. 240. 240. We need to add 240 grams of spinach. Close. <laughs>
just checking on my peas and I am so happy because the ones that I replanted are now sprouting. Just super exciting. Makes me feel a lot better, you know. It's always kind of sad to see something not work or whatever, but I'm glad they're growing now and they actually don't look too far behind the others, so hopefully we will get a harvest from them this year. 